It is the duty and interest of the people of God not to be afraid of evil tidings, not to be afraid of hearing bad news, and when they do, not to be put into confusion by it and into an amazing expectation of worse and worse. But whatever happens, whatever threatens, to be able to say with blessed Paul, none of these things move me, neither will I fear, though the earth be removed. This is a quote coming to you from Matthew Henry. In this broadcast, we are continuing our new series based on the theme, Nearer My God to Thee. In this uh, particular podcast, we will use as our main text, Psalm 13, verse 4, which says, Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. What is implied in this scripture is the intention of the enemy against you. This is his objective. He wants you to be moved. You need to be aware of this. And that's the reason why we are covering this topic in this particular message, to make you aware of the enemy's sole intention against you. We will ask such questions as, what does it mean to be moved? Or how do you keep from being moved? And finally, we will see that it is God's will and desire that you be not moved. Okay, going to our main text, Psalm 13, verse 4. David said, lest mine enemies say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But when we look at the beginning of Psalm 13, we see a series of questions, and one that David asks is, How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? How long am I going to be in such perplexities and anxieties of mind, not knowing what course to take or how to get out of this trouble? And then that's when David said this, this statement, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. I have conquered him. I've overpowered him. I've obtained a complete victory over him. Let's the, your enemies say this. Let Satan succeed in his temptations and, and excites you strongly to sin. And then he went on to say, and those that trouble me, those that trouble me, the troublers, my adversaries, and those troublers are sin, Satan, and the world. And those that trouble me rejoice. They rejoice. They exult. They triumph. They shout as in triumph. They rejoice at my harm. They revel in my ruin. And one commentary said that they compose comedies out of my tragedies. Let that those that trouble me rejoice. When do they rejoice? When I am moved. When I am moved. When I'm cast down from my firm position. When I'm moved from any degree of steadfastness or firmness. Or when I'm moved from, from my faith, from hope, from the ways of God. And I'm overcome by sin. We have to ask ourselves the question, what does it mean to be moved? Because you see, throughout Psalms, uh, especially David, but uh, other uh, psalmists have mentioned this, 
about being moved. It's important that we look at this and study it. David said in our main text, Psalm 13, 4, Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Then David said in Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. In Psalm 46, 5, uh, the psalmist wrote this for the sons of Korah. The psalmist said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. And then David in Psalm 112, verse 6, he said, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. So we ask ourselves, what does it mean to be moved? What does it look like when someone is moved according to these scriptures? Well, we get uh, a, uh, we see a hint at this in Psalm 112, verse 7, where David said, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Well, the opposite of that is to be moved. To be moved is to be afraid of evil tidings, to be put into confusion, to have this expectation of things getting worse and worse. So to be moved, you're afraid. You're afraid of evil tidings. You're afraid of hearing bad news, of reverses or losses. You're afraid for the future. You're afraid at the report of approaching calamities. This is what it means to be moved. You feel tossed about by every wind or tempest, by what you see, by what you hear. You're moved, you're moved, you're moved, you're tossed about by these things. Also, another way to look at it is this way. To be moved is to be full of anxious care. The, the very essence of anxious care is that you begin to imagine that you're wiser than God, thrusting yourself into his place, and you labor to take upon yourself your weary burden. Uh, you're moved when you become tempted to, do the, to use the wrong means to help yourself. When you don't go to God as your counselor, but you resort to human wisdom, you go to the broken cistern instead of to the fountain of living water. You begin to doubt God's loving kindness. You become unsettled in your faith. Your love to God grows cold. Your life becomes one of self-seeking. You become absorbed with yourself. Your lack of confidence in God leads you to wander from him. You get drawn away from the path of obedience and you eventually quit your duty to God. You, do you see this downward spiral? It, it's no surprise that the devil rejoices when you're moved, when you are moved and you're full of anxious care. So we see the devil's intention, but we have to ask ourselves, how do you keep from being moved? Well, the Bible tells us, the Bible gives us five answers for that. Number one, you set the Lord always before you. This is how you keep from being moved. You set the Lord always before you. Psalm 16, 8, David said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. You set the Lord always before you. There's, there are two ways of looking at this. First of all, by night as well as by day, in your private meditations as well as in your public life, you always regard yourself as being in the presence of God. And you always endeavor to feel that his eye is upon you. So this is how you keep from being moved. You set the Lord always before you. You think of yourself always, I'm always in his presence. His eye is upon me. 
Another way of uh, seeing this is you foresee the Lord always before your face. I've set the Lord always before me. You see the Lord always before your face. You set your eye of faith completely upon him, not allowing it to take to other things. And notice David said, I've set the Lord always, not by fits and starts, always in every place, every condition, every company, every employment, every enjoyment. I've set the Lord always before me. How do you keep from being moved? The second thing, you recognize that God is at your right hand. Now we look at Psalm 16, 8 again. David said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Because he is at my right hand, you recognize that God is at your right hand. He's there in the position of defense and protection. He, the Lord as your protector is at hand. He's always near you. He's right there at your right hand to strengthen you, to protect you, to assist you, to comfort you. You have one near who can defend you. He's always ready to interpose for your defense, to help you so that you don't fall right there at your right hand. How do you keep from being moved? Number three, you realize that God is in your midst. Psalm 46, 5, the psalmist said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. God is in the midst of her. This is the great security of the church, that God is in the midst of his church. He's in the midst of his people by his gracious presence. He has set up his tabernacle in his church and in each Christian. He has undertaken their protection. God is in the midst of you. And because He's in your midst. The, by, the psalmist said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Because God is in your midst. He is there to help you. To help you. This is language that expresses the confidence of the people in time, in the time of impending danger. God is right there to help you always when the need requires it. In your danger, he will interpose to save you at any time you are in distress. As soon as the onset is made, God's right there to resist it because he's in the midst of you. He will be a suitable, seasonable, timely help to you in time of trouble. And the psalmist didn't stop there. He said, God shall help her at that right early. This is at any critical time with utmost speed in due season when the help is most needed in the nick of time when help is most seasonable and best welcome. God will come very early to your aid. So how do you keep from being moved? You realize God's in your midst. He's there to help you, and he'll help you right early. Okay, number four. How do you keep from being moved? You keep from being moved by having a fixed and established heart. Now we look at Psalm 112. It begins with these words. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. And then in verse 6, David picks up, he says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see, see his desire upon his enemies. Now, remember in the beginning we said, what does it mean to be moved? And 
it's uh, to be moved is to be afraid of evil tidings. But here David said, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? Because his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And this is the sovereign remedy against having disquieting, the, uh, disquieting fears of evil tidings. To have a heart that is fixed, th that's firm, that's established, that's determined to walk in the path of duty where you keep your thoughts composed, you, your will is resigned to the holy will of God, you keep your temper sedate and your spirit even. And the reason why the, David could say that his heart was fixed or firm was because he was trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. He's confiding in the Lord. His confidence is in God, and he feels assured all things will be well. So how do you keep from being moved? You have a fixed heart, but not only that, your heart is established. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. To have an established heart means that it's sustained, it's propped up, it's buttressed by God's strength. By God's strength, it's lifted up, propped up by God's strength. His heart is fixed in the truth of God, and that's where he finds firm footing. And this is the best way of fixing and establishing your heart, is by fixing it in the truth of of God in God's word. And this is when you will find your love to God is deep and true. Your confidence in God is firm and unmoved and your courage has a firm foundation. It's supported by omnipotence. And lastly, how do you keep from being moved? Number five, you cast your burden upon the Lord. David said in Psalm 55, 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast your burden. Commit it to God. Commit to God your burden. And there are so many uh, ways to describe your burden. It's your lot your portion, the assignment that God lays upon you. But it can also include your disappointments, your wounds, your bereavements, your cares, your businesses, your travails, your troubles, your crosses, your fears, your lots, your condition, your affliction, your weakness, your dejection. What did David say? Cast it upon the Lord. Roll all your care upon the Lord. Cast your lot, your assignment, cast it upon the Lord. What he has assigned you to, uh, to be done or born or carried. What he has assigned you to do or what he has allowed you to carry. It's your burden to try you and your duty to engage you. Cast it upon the Lord and what will he do? He'll sustain you. He'll bear you up and your burden. He'll hold you up, sustain you by a sufficiency of strength or nourishment. He will give you such a measure of strength and grace that you'll be able to bear it. He'll save you from despondency, impart to you spiritual strength, overrule all your trials and afflictions for good, turning everything for good. He'll be your arm every morning. He'll carry you in the arms of his power and strengthen your spirit by his Holy Spirit. If you will cast your burden on the Lord, then you'll, he'll never allow you to be moved. How do you keep from being moved? We looked at five points. Set your Lord, set the Lord always before you. Recognize that God is at your right hand. Realize God is in your midst. Have a fixed 
an established heart by trusting in the Lord. And lastly, cast your burden upon the Lord. That assignment he's given you or the thing he has allowed in your life, cast it upon the Lord. Now in closing, we see in the scriptures that it is God's will and desire that you be not moved. In Psalm 121.3, David said, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Then in Psalm 66, 9, we, we read, Which holdeth our soul and life, and suffereth not our foot to be moved. This is what God does. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He suffers not your feet to be moved. It is his will that you be not moved. He will not allow any evil to approach you to do hurt. He'll enable you to stand firm. He keeps your feet from falling. He doesn't allow you to be moved out of your spiritual state in which you are standing. He doesn't allow you to be moved off of your foundation or the rock of ages. He doesn't allow you to be tempted above what you are able. Though many will try to undermine you by fraud, he keeps you from being frightened. And remember, he that keeps you neither slumbers nor sleeps. Adam Clark said the foundation, God's infinite power and goodness on which thou standest cannot be moved. And whilst thou standest on this basis, thy foot cannot be moved. The pulpit commentary said, while the world is being turned upside down, the church is unmoved since God is in the midst of her. Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I encourage you stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, Nearer My God to Thee. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will walk in the truth every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>